Hello and welcome to the first video of the Kawasaki channel. I'm Darren, your host, and through these videos I hope to show you about electronics. The main subjects of the channel will be electronic lab equipment, valve amplification, vintage computing, 3D design and printing, electronic repairs and techniques and product reviews. In this video I want to show you how to build one of the most basic pieces of equipment using the repair of an item with an unknown state, an AC current limiter. This is how I do it but please make sure you have read and understood the warning at the start of the video. Please like and subscribe as we have a lot of interesting videos lined up for you. We have a planned series of videos where we were building a valve tracer, designing and printing the case, putting it all together and testing and using it. If you look on YouTube at the moment, there is a test video where you can get a hint of what it can do. Speaking to the designer of the board, there is new software soon allowing it to do even more. We're also planning a number of videos where we will be building valve amplifiers from scratch, showing you how they work, looking at the schematics and the layouts, and then the actual amp, amp itself. We also plan to make numerous series of videos where we'll be building test equipment such as a bias tester, a valve tester, AC mains unit and many smaller projects as well. So now onto this video, I plan to show you how to build a simple UK mains courier limiter. First, we need to take the wooden baseboard of the limiter and decide where the socket and sealing rolls are going. This piece is 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters and 12 millimeters thick. Then we need to screw the main socket to the board, making sure that the screws are not so long as to go straight through it. I've already broken out one of the pre-shaped openings closest to the sealing rolls and another nearest to me. The ceiling rose is designed to be fitted to a ceiling and for the cable to pass through the ceiling to the ring main. We however need it to stay on the board we are building. As the ceiling rose screws to the board we need to make a shallow indent for the cable to pass under the rose to the socket back box. I've marked this up and I am using a chisel to remove some of the wood just deep enough for the cable to pass through without being damaged. We now move on to the two core cable running from the socket to the ceiling rows. The cable I am using is a black 1mm flexible two core cable. The device is double insulated so requires no earth. We need to remove about 30mm of the out insulation and about 8mm of each inner core. We then pass this through the hole in the ceiling rows using the channel we created earlier. With the cable through the hole in the ceiling rolls, we now need to screw the ceiling rolls to the board. The ceiling rolls contains two, three or four sets of screw contacts, with each set having all of its contacts connected together. This is used when installing a ceiling rolls to the ring main and allows for switching and pass through. We will only need two of the sets and so connect one wire to each of the two sets, making sure that the connections are tightened up. With both connections made we can screw in the final wood screw. Next we need to make sure that the cable cannot be accidentally pulled out of the tester leaving hazardous voltages open to being touched. As we are building this device using items normally used in a permanent installation we need some other way to secure the cables. There are various methods we could employ to secure the cables but as this is for our own use I will use the simplest method which is to simply tie a very loose knot in the cable which will stop it being pulled through the hole. For completeness we'll do this at both ends. We now need to install the bulb holder in from the ceiling rows to its base. So remove about 5 to 8 millimeters of insulation off each of the two wires from the bulb holder. The two wires coming from the socket should be connected to different connector sets in the ceiling rows. We now need to connect one of the wires from the bulb holder to one of those sets and the other wire from the bulb holder to the other set. 
This should create a path where one of the wires from the main socket passes into a connector set and from there into the bulb then back from the bulb to the other connector set and then on back to the main socket. This is what your wiring should now look like. We now need to remove the outer insulation from the three core wire in order to fit a plug. I will speed through the fitting of the plug but basically the cardboard should always be removed. The outer insulation should always be under the clamp, cable clamp which should be screwed up tight enough to stop the cable being pulled from the plug by someone or yanked out if they drip over it. The inner conductors should have 5 to 8 millimeters of insulation removed and the wires should be cut short enough so that they reach the screw terminals they meant to go to. The very short brown wire or live should go to the fuse terminal. The green and yellow wire or earth should go to the earth terminal which is the one with the longest pin and the blue wire or neutral should go to the remaining terminal. There should be no stray bits of wire and the fuse should be of the correct value. At the end of this sequence I will leave a diagram showing the correct uh, installation of a UK plug. When it comes up on the screen you can pause it to make sure that your wiring is correct. Next we need to complete the installation by connecting the three core mains cable to the socket. We need to pull the three core cable through the hole into the socket back box then use the knot trick to stop the cable being pulled out. The neutral and earth wires coming from the plug go to the neutral and earth connections on the socket. But with the tester the live goes out to the bulb and back to the connector. So connect the plug live to the brown wire from the two core cable and connect a length of brown wire to the blue return wire of the two core cable. You should now have a brown wire to connect to the live of the socket. The current limiter works by passing the live from the plug through the bulb on its way to the socket. Normally if, a plug, if you plug in a device that has a dead short into a socket it will blow the fuse and likely the ring main circuit breaker because all the current goes through that dead short until something gives which in this case is the circuit breaker or the fuse. With the current limiter the bulb is in the circuit with the item on test and if there is a dead short in the equipment you are testing it doesn't damage the equipment any further because the equipment effectively just works like a switch being in the on position and the bulb lights up instead. So effectively this device limits the amount of current that can pass through the equipment on test. At the end of this sequence I will show you a still photograph of the connections within the switch back box so that you can see that your connections are correct. Following the still I will include a short video showing what happens when there is a dead short in the equipment on test. Do not repeat this just yourself. This device is a good way to make sure that you limit any further damage to equipment on test. It, it does not make it safe to stick your hands inside and as stated in the intro you do so at your own risk. As I said earlier I'm going to show you what happens if you plug a device into the current limiter which has a dead short or is drawing a lot of current. First I will show you what happens if you plug a normal working device in. The device I'm plugging in is an LAP socket tester which shows two flashing green LEDs and makes a noise if the socket is wired correctly.
Now I'm going to bypass the safety measures on the socket in order to short out the neutral and live. Never do this. I'm only doing it to show you how the current limiter works. If you do this with a normal socket, it could cause serious injury and damage. The bulb should light up when there's a dead short or heavy current, which it does. 